Looking at his disciples, <clears throat> he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you, and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their fathers treated the prophets. <clears throat> but woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. 
Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for that is how their fathers treated the false prophets. But I tell you who hear. I'm going to repeat that. But I tell you who hear. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone strikes you, you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But <clears throat> love your enemies. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your re reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. He also told him this parable, Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A student is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take a speck out of your eye when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye, you hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not? and do not do what I say. I will show you what he is like, who comes to me and hears my word and puts them into practice. <clears throat> he is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my word and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed, and its destruction was complete. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before the Lord with joyful song. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before the Lord with joyful song. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, come 
sunken to his voice with joyful praise. And know that he is God and we are his people. And know that he is God and we are his people. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before the Lord with joyful song. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before the Lord with joyful song. And know that He is God and we are His people. And know that He is God and we are His people. And know that He is God and we are His people. And know that He is God and we are His people. Worship the Lord. I guess I always go to my, this is my go-to scripture uh, when thinking about communion. It's in 1 Corinthians. You're all familiar with it, chapter 11. Uh, it's my go-to scripture because it always uh, is not what I necessarily read, but it always gets my mind set right for uh, communion because Paul was chastening the Corinthians uh, in that chapter, and he said, he wasn't praising them at all, and he spent the first few verses talking about some weaknesses he found in their participation in communion, that they were meeting with divisions among them. They didn't agree on everything, and they had some disagreements, and that they were not necessarily treating the Lord's Supper with what he felt was the dignity and respect that it deserved and that it was not a dinner on the grounds type of situation. But I always find something new whenever I go to scripture and that I think is one of the great uh, qualities of the, the Bible that you can read the same scriptures over and over and typically you can find something new in it and I did this time again even though at 73, I don't know how many times I've read this. But what I found to, to capture me in this was a mention uh, that Jesus, in preparing the, uh, the apostles with him for the Lord's Supper, and this just struck me again. I don't know why it struck me, but it did. It said, for I have received, this is in verse 23 of the 11th chapter. For I have received from the Lord what I also passed on uh, to you. The Lord Jesus, and here is where I underline, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and uh, when he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. On the night he was betrayed. I don't know if I would have had the patience, Nick, <laughs> at that time, the loving spirit to be able to not look at the one who was about to betray him with a haughty spirit or with a discerning look or something that might have taken away from the, the real love of that whole communion supper on the night he was betrayed. So in verse 27, whenever uh, you eat or drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, you'll be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat or drink the bread and drink from the cup. And he went on with further directions. And in that final verse said, when I come, I will give further directions. And we're awaiting that. If you will, pray with me, please. Holy Father, we are so thankful that you were able to 
Maintain your patience, your presence of mind, your godly spirit, and your son. And prepare for us this communion celebration. We thank you for this bread which represents his body. We ask that you be with us as we partake of it, that our mindset will be correct and proper and appropriate and loving. Be with us as we continue in this service. In Christ's name, amen. <clears throat> Let's pray again. Father, thank you for this cup, this fruit of the vine, representative of the blood that was shed for us. We ask again that our taking of it be proper. For we ask in Christ's name, amen. Thank you, Lord. 